Welcome to the Concentric Home Solution Woodworking Channel. In this video, I'll be going over the nail guns and staplers that I use for cabinet making. My go to is this Grex. P650 23 gauge pin nailer. What I like about this nailer in particular is its range of nails that it uses. I mean, we're talking about, I don't have all the nails, I don't have all the nails that it uses, but <laughs> we're talking about from about three eighths I believe yes three eighths which is a real small nail from three eighths all the way up to two inches and I'll give you an idea of the two inches This, my friend, is a two inch headless pin nailer. You know, basically a long needle. So I can even use this for crown molding. And it goes all the way down. This is a three quarter inch. So if you want an idea of the smallest size that it uses, this is a three quarter inch. This, this, is a three eighths. You see how tiny that is? So even to my most delicate trim pieces, I can use this nailer with confidence, knowing that I'm not gonna split and or destroy that, that delicate piece. So that's why this is my go-to, is my most versatile, and it's also a very, very dependable nailer. The very first time I used this nailer was up on a scaffold and I was on a second story doing a, um, in a ceiling. And I always tell people this joke. It seems like to me the most likely time for me to destroy or hurt or damage a tool it's when I first get it. The very first time I went to use this, I dropped it off a scaffold. And you can't tell that. It survived that far. <laughs> I, I was so upset that day. I was, I was like, I just bought this thing. But it survived it. Now, it came with a non-miring tip. It also came with an extra one that stores on board. I really like that. It's not oilless. You have to put a you know a couple drop of oil in every once in a while. And if I understand, I think currently it comes standard with this um, guide piece. But at the time it didn't. I actually bought it at a trade show. And what this allows me to do is, let's say I had to nail into this, and I had a you know a board perpendicular to it that I had to nail into and I had a line and let's say this was the center line this was the center line to the board I was trying to nail into you know below for a carcass or something I can align this up with that and tighten it down see that so now I have something, a guide, so I can have consistent nailing pattern along that line, all the way down. Very ingenious, like that. When you're not using it, you take it off and you know, you can store it in your tool bag or whatever the case may be. That was a neat feature. And as I said, I, I'm pretty confident it's now a standard part of the new tools if you go out and buy it. 
but that used to be an accessory that you purchase. I like the fact that it has the double trigger. So the gun does not activate by pulling one trigger. You have to pull the one in the back, then you could activate the gun. You can fire the gun. So that's a safety feature. I really like that feature. It supports air pressure from 70 to 110 PSI. And as I said, is a very well built gun. I've never had a problem with it. It'll make a difference what type of wood I'm working with. It always sinks and um, the nail holes are very small as you would imagine with a pin nailer. It's a, basically a pin. This is my favorite, as I said. My second most used, and I use it in every project that pertains to cabinet making, for building carcasses specifically, is this rigid quarter inch crown stapler. What I mainly use this for is as a clamp for carcasses, cabinet carcasses. So before I could get a countersink screw which, was, which is the main fastener that I use for assembling the carcass. I use a couple of these just to hold the carcass together so I'm not fighting with it. And it's easier than using clamps and so forth. So I use this to hold the structure uh, together. Then I come back and I finish it off with screws. Screws is the main fasteners I use in assembling my carcass. So that's the purpose of this and this has not failed me for the time I've owned it and I've owned it for a pretty long time. It's, as you can tell it's made by rigid. You have you know single or repeat fire. I don't the repeat fire doesn't mean anything to me. Um, I don't need to use it that fast. I only really single fire is why I generally where I use it. This one has depth adjustment, so you can adjust the sink, how far you want it to set. And its power requirement is 70 to 120 PSI. And its fastener range is from 3 eighths to an inch and a half. So a bunch of inch and a half is what I generally use. It's very good. Now, one of the unique features about this, this particular gun is, it's oilless. You don't have to um, put oil in this one. And <laughs> that's good and bad. All my other ones require oil. I think I accidentally put oil in this one time. It hasn't messed it up, but because I'm used to putting oil in my um, pneumatic nailers, I think I put oil in this one time. So you have to be careful with that. I don't know if that's a good thing or not. But it's good for the application that I use it as far as using it as a clamp to hold my carcasses together so I can get screws into them. The final one I'm gonna show you today is actually my most recent addition and actually, for the money, it's great. It's great. It's for the money. It's very great. I don't even think I spent $50 for this. But I would like to get one with more improved features. Um, but before I get into that, let me tell you what it is and what I use it for. It is a T50 staple gun. Kind of like 
the manual one that you use, that silver staple gun, T50. Okay. And this one is a 3 8 um, If I, the memory shows me right, these are 3 8 or half inch. Yeah, this is a 3 8 crown. Right, T50. Now, I use this for one task. Put it on backs or what you call dust covers on cabinetry. It is perfect for that. It doesn't blow through the quarter inch or even if you use Luan or whatever you use the thinner material, it doesn't blow through it. That's what's good about this. And it gives you, you know, good uh, mechanical fastening. If you want to use it without glue or you could use glue and use this as a clamp to hold that back in you know depending on what you use it for glue is not always appropriate because sometimes you want to be able to remove if it's a piece of furniture something that moves around you can get access to the back or if you're using it as a dust cover for money neat for like let's say a, uh, a dresser or something like that and you want to be able to get access you don't want to glue that because you want to be able to remove it but if it's for a cabinet that's going up against a wall and you want to use glue to add you know structure structural strength for whatever you can use it with glue too now what i don't like about this particular one uh, is is a safety feature it doesn't have the double trigger like the grex pin nailer its safety is a little thing that you flip around a little metal piece that prevents you from but it can shift on its own. It's not doing it right now. Of course it's not. But it, it shifts. It can shift on its own. And then, then the safety is gone. That I don't care for that. I think I'm going to get one with a double trigger. I just feel better about that. And uh, I also might get an automatic one. One that you hold on. You go pop, 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 pop. That is appropriate for stapling backs. Because you sometimes you just want to go fast and staple the back of our um, cabinet so I, I may end up upgrading to something like that by grex or another company uh, another little upgrade i want to do to this and the grex and, and it's a feature that was that is found on the rigid i generally do this on all my nail guns in the past but the rigid came with it it's a swivel for the um, connecting hose I, I do plan to add cordless nailers into my arsenal, especially for using on site. But I still have a preference for, for pneumatic nailer. Main thing is the size and weight. That's a big thing when you're using a tool all day long. The size and the weight. And maneuverability and so forth so I still like and use pneumatic nailer but sometimes when you have a small job or you just want to run in or run out or you want to do something quickly you don't want to set up a compressor so the cordless ones come into that and my first cordless one is gonna be a Milwaukee M12 platform that I'm, that I'm on now with the drill, the installation drill and so forth I discussed in a previous video. And that's gonna be a stapler and a pin nailer. And when I get those, of course, you're gonna find out about it. And that, and they're gonna enter into this tool set for cabinet making. But for now, this is what I have. And I'm, I'm very happy. And all of them fulfill their niche as I told you the only problem I have with the win is the safety and I would like to get an automatic one but other than that if you're comfortable with this and you're gonna be careful that you're not gonna fire this at somebody and you you're comfortable and you're willing to take on that responsibility this nailer has not failed me either it's never jammed I never had a problem with it it's, for, I mean, for inexpensive nail gun, it does what it's supposed to do. I cannot tell you that it doesn't. It does what it's supposed to do. 
So I give it I give it a thumbs up, especially for someone that is budget conscious. These are the nailers that I use for cabinetry. Thank you for watching and have a good day. If you enjoyed this video and you would like to be notified when new content is dropped on this channel, like, subscribe, hit the bell notification, and drop a comment down below.